It has been one month now that the Chateau Route project takes you to chateaus, fortified cities and abbey, sometimes unknown, but always with a strong historical, cultural and heritage value. We've already met so many interesting people that strive to find solutions to save their place and make it future-proof with their different point of views as part of a public or private heritage mission. The one we'll introduce you today is really one of a kind. Welcome to this new episode of the Chateau Route Project and today we are welcomed at the Chateau d'Orquevaux. Located in the Grand Est region, and more precisely in champagne ardennes Orquevaux is a tiny town of less than a hundred inhabitants. Its chateau, from the end of the 19th century, is not really historically noticeable. However, when you look at its French Second Empire style, expressing bourgeoisie, balance and beauty, you may fall in love with this place. Interestingly, this place was built by a descendant of the famous philosopher des Lumières, Diderot, and owned during the 20th century by the family of Saint-Exupéry. But what is passionating about Orquevaux is what it's now. The chateau was acquired by an Australian couple in 1987, then by the American couple Amram and Virginia Attias in 2003, and finally, it was transferred to their son, Ziggy Atias, in 2016. You know, when I first came, when I first came here, um, I assumed I was going to have to sell it, like fix it up a little bit and sell it, because I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a position to be able to keep it. That wasn't a, even a conversation. So I assumed I was going to have to sell it. Um, but very quickly, I remembered that idea of when I first came here and I thought that this could be a place for artists. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if there is a way for artists. Like I started thinking about it in a deeper way. And I started putting the word out and really didn't know if it would work, you know, but it just gave me, it was more fun to fix the chateau up with the hope of keeping it and being able to offer it to the world for the creative world and for artists and for like, there was a bigger idea there than just a wealthy family coming here and just buying it. Um, so it, so that gave me excitement to fix it and maybe be able to do that. And then when we put the word out that, the, that there's applications and if you'd like to come, it, um, and then people came. Ziggy is not the guy that you will meet every day. In the past, he was a DJ and music promoter. He owned several restaurants. He directed numerous award-winning films. He also had his time as a designer and artist. And finally, he is the father of three daughters. He shares the management of the chateau with Biola van Rensburg, who founded the Van Rensburg Gallery in Hong Kong and Australia, representing 35 artists worldwide. She is a practicing artist herself, and director of the artist residency of the chateau. And that's the point. This chateau has been transformed into a paradise for all kinds of artists who want to live a unique experience in a unique place, where everything is designed to push their creativity above their limits. When you look at Biola and Ziggy's experience, you must understand the statement and know how to make this place a paradise for artists. They used every room and every space they could to offer apartments and studios for artists staying here for two weeks or a month. During this precious time, the artists can meet each other, practice, share and evolve in a magnificent environment. They don't have to worry about food and cleaning, everything is perfectly organized and so they can focus on their creation. As long as works continue to open more space for years to come, we can assume that it's a successful formula. With no subsidies to help this chateau, Ziggy has no choice but find its way to fully finance the maintenance of its heritage. Even if this chateau is not really open to all the public because of its residency function, 
it has integrated an economical model that allows us to tell that it will be maintained as long as those residences continue. We'd already started planning and uh, working on the gallery um, when Ziggy had bought the one of the buildings in the village and we had the idea to make it a gallery to put the collection in. And then it started building on that and we were talking about having more and more galleries and that slowly kind of came about and then became much more exciting, especially as the collection was growing. Um, and we had the idea that then you could show the artwork but not to sell, just to bring attention to the artists. So as the artists come here, people, the whole village would then turn into an art village that would attract more people to not only the chateau but also to the village and then there's all these galleries that are scattered throughout the village that people can come and see work and sometimes come into the artists studios and see them working and it becomes a whole village just based around art. Let us know in the comments what do you think about transforming a chateau into an artist residence and if you think that it can be a model for saving other decaying castles all around France. This is the end of the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We are still looking for castles and interesting visions for the future. So don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see where we are daily and share with us your thoughts about the castles we are visiting. Cheers.